Hi, I'm Melinda Rose. And I'm Laura Marshall. And this is Light Matters for August 17th, 2011. Hoping to gain a clearer understanding of what happens to individual molecules during chemical reactions, an international team including MIT is creating a laser device that can release intense bursts of light to capture single electrons as they orbit an atom's nucleus. Capturing such movies is difficult considering that one electron in a hydrogen atom completes a full orbit of the nucleus in just 151 attoseconds, or billionths of a billionth of a second. Previous attempts to produce attosecond pulses combined laser beams using a separate laser for each beam. That approach made it difficult to synchronize the beams. The new simpler approach passed a single laser beam through a crystal that splits it into beams of different frequencies. Because the beams are derived from a single source, they remain perfectly synchronized. Although this yields very short pulses of light, they are still not on the scale of attoseconds. So the next step would be to send the pulses through a gas where the photons are absorbed and re-emitted as new ones with higher frequencies. Higher frequencies mean even shorter light pulses. The researchers have not yet performed this final step. Currently, they pass their laser beam through two amplifiers to increase its energy, but they need more energy still to elicit enough higher frequency photons from the gas. Adding another amplifier should do the trick, they say, although it poses some engineering challenges. A new technique that dynamically controls plasmonic airy beams over metallic surfaces is paving the way for fast ultra-compact communication systems and optoelectronic devices. When airy beams, which travel without diffraction in a curved arc in free space, are coupled with surface plasmon polaritons, or SPPs, they can be used to manipulate light beyond the diffraction limit. Until now, different plasmonic elements for manipulating surface plasmons were realized either through structuring metal surfaces or by placing dielectric structures on metals. These approaches are very difficult, if not impossible, to reconfigure in real time, which is crucial to optical interconnections in light-based computers and communication networks. A computer-controlled spatial light modulator provides dynamic control of the plasmonic airy beams, allowing the beams to manipulate SPPs without the need for any waveguide structures over metallic surfaces. The technique is promising not only for applications in reconfigurable optical interconnections, but also for precisely manipulating particles on extremely small scales. The global photonic crystals market is expected to hit $34.5 billion by 2016, growing at an annual rate of 46 percent, according to a new report. Two promising markets for photonic crystals are optical fiber and displays. In 2010, optical fiber represented 27 percent of the market and is expected to reach $10.8 billion by 2016. Display share was 37.5 percent last year and would be at $6 billion by 2016. The range of potential applications for photonic crystals is diverse and growing. Although adoption of the technology has only been seen in recent decades, it has been around for over a century. Complications hampering their adoption include physical limitations and device efficiencies, according to CompaniesAndMarkets.com, which published the report. Well, Melinda won't be in the studio next week. She's going to be reporting for Light Matters from SPIE Optics and Photonics in San Diego. That's right. There's lots of exciting talks I'm looking forward to attending and reporting back for Light Matters, but I also want to make sure that everyone knows to stop by our booth, booth number 242, on Wednesday, August 24th, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., because we're having a special Light Matters celebration and asking our viewers to be part of the show. We'll have our cameras set up at the Photonics Media booth, and we're asking you to stop by and tell us how light matters to you. We'll have great giveaways, and someone's even going to win a flat-screen TV. So stop by and say hello on Wednesday between 10 and 2, and you might even see yourself in a future edition of Light Matters. Speaking of great giveaways, you still have a chance to win an iPad 2. Anytime between now and September 30th, simply share the link to this video or any other edition of Light Matters with a friend or colleague, and make sure you copy lightmatters at photonics.com on the email you send, and you'll be entered into a drawing to win an iPad, too. We'd also like to hear from you. Please send your questions or comments to lightmatters.photonics.com. You can also follow Photonics Media on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's only five minutes to enlightenment.